Have you ever considered getting a topper for your Jeep Gladiator but don't know what to look for? Well, we've got you covered. Hey everybody, I'm Isaac. And I'm Sterling. And we're with the Trails and Trucks team and today we're going to talk about these two toppers behind us, our experience with them, and some of the key differences between them. So Sterling, why a topper in the first place? Okay, so if you're buying a topper, really what you're looking for is something to enclose your bed, keep it safe from the elements, keep the stuff inside secure. That was really important for us. I myself drive this Gladiator um, because it's the media truck, and this is how we transport all of our camera gear to and from the trails. So the goal was simple. Keep things inside dry and secure. Thus, we bought a couple of toppers. Today, we're gonna to discuss some of the key features on both of these toppers. So, Sterling has the most experience with these. He ran the ARE on the media truck for like the first six months, and these last six months, he's been running the GFC. So, we're gonna start at the top of the list. We've chosen seven things to discuss today. Number one is functionality and ease of use. So, Sterling, why don't we start with the ARE, and we'll dive right into it. So, functionality, Walk me through the functionality and ease of use of this topper. Yeah, absolutely. So um, as you kind of mentioned, I ran this ARE first for about six months. This was the first topper that I was really drawn to. And really I saw a lot of functional advantages to having a setup like this. So like I said, we have camera gear coming in and out of the truck, right? So being able to get in and out of the side of the bed here, while maintaining security was very important. Yep. So I like the fact that this ARE not only is compact, but there's still more than enough room to reach in and grab anything you might need out of the bed. I mean, I've even fit small pelicans through here, camera cases, what have you. Not to mention that when you come back here, we've got this huge rear window, right? So functionally speaking, there's like lots of weather ceiling pops right open and you have full utility of the rear. Now there's a couple other things that I thought was really, really cool about this particular topper. Um, in terms of functionality, they've got a couple of really cool features. For instance, this one as optioned has sliding side windows um, with like mesh behind them, so they kind of work as dog doors. They, that's actually what they sell it as, you know, if you've got pets in the back oh, and that's stuff. Cool. Yeah, it keeps it ventilated. And that actually, they brought that into the um, rear window. The pass-through is also oh, sliding, it's, right. so which you, is great. It's the Gladiator slides, and so does the topper. Yes, cool. exactly. So that's actually great because there have been a few instances where we've been shooting, where someone's actually in the back of the truck with the camera shooting like rollers of vehicles, what have you. And instead of needing a radio or whatever, you can just pop those pass-throughs open and we're able to, you know, yell at each other through the back of the truck, which I thought was really, really great. So obviously with all the camera gear and all the Pelican cases and everything, security is important. So tell me about that a little bit. Yeah, so what I really liked about this Airy is of course that they've got these really secure locks on every side. Right? So that means that you can lock all this stuff up, you can keep it secure, you can leave gear in the back while you know, you're know you out of the restaurant, it's no big deal. Um, the only thing that was kind of a blessing and a curse, I really like that there are these windows on the side and they are tinted, which is great, but you still can see through them as spec, which means that, you know, if someone really wants to, they can still peer in, they can see that you've got stuff in there. So that might be a little bit of a con, but overall I'm really happy. These are definitely high quality locks, nothing I've ever been worried about. You almost need like limo tint. I mean borderline, yeah. yeah. Which would yeah. make sense. I mean that would, that would be a nice boost in security for sure. Right, I have seen actually, um, there are some products on the market um, I believe Smart Cap's one of them that actually has like a like a contractor version of their topper that has like the, the screen on the back that's kind of a one way. You mm. can see out, but you can't see in. I've always thought that's a really cool um, addition that they had that currently I don't believe ARE offers. Yeah, no brainer for what we do. Right. Cool. Okay, let's close this thing up and let's talk about the functionality of your current topper, the GFC. Absolutely. Sweet. So the GFC is the topper that we are currently running. If you want to open it up here, yeah. I want to show you guys 
really the selling point for me when it comes to functionality on this topper. What you get with this topper is a really, really unique design that maximizes the pass-through into your bed, right? So, I mean, you can fit a big Pelican through there. Absolutely, and we do. We have these big 16, 15, you know, camera cases that go up to here, and you can still fit these things through on the side. You've got a lot of light in here. Uh, in terms of functionality, the roof, which is probably kind of hard to see, is actually um, partly see-through, um, meaning that we get a lot of sunlight in from the top. Now that's by design from GSC. Sick. Right, which is really, really cool, especially when, you know, if you're out on the trail and you're trying to get that golden hour light with the camera, I'm gonna relate this all to, you know, video production, you're already losing light really by the minute. Yep. So being able to get into your truck without having to deal with actually wiring up lights or having flashlights or whatever, and whatever sunlight is left is actually coming through your roof, that is a big advantage. Very to cool. Me. The other thing I wanted to mention is really the strength here. I mean, obviously the build quality is great, but this topper can actually hold a whole lot of weight on top. It's designed to do that, which means you have a lot of added functionality if you want to add things like camera cases on top of the topper. Or just say you need like four or five videographers and they're all up on the roof shooting, it can handle that weight. Or I mean, just say yeah. 10 of them. Absolutely. 10 people up there all shooting, all yeah, filming. I, I bet you'd run out of space for people before you'd run into a weight limitation on top of this thing. Pretty cool. I mean, with like the metal chassis in there, I mean, it makes sense how strong that roof is. It's pretty yes. cool. And, and this is something that, you know, GFC talks about that really drew me to it as well. You know, this is really designed to be beat on. It's designed for the trails. It's designed to go off-roading. Now, why that's important is that just means that when the truck is rocking around, people are getting in and out of it. This thing is really, really secure, and it's designed to take that sway, take that movement, take that abuse, which you don't always get with the fiberglass options. So in terms of functionality, I have to give the edge to GFC here. Um, my only gripe is I'm really not a fan of these locks. Honestly, they look great, don't get me wrong, they're flush, but functionally, I really kind of yeah. liked the T-handles that the ARE had. So while we're talking about latches, run me through security. How is this thing, how does it stack up against the AR, ARE when we're talking about keeping our gear safe? So I'm gonna give, it's a bit of a wash. I can't w quite decide, here's why. In terms of like visible security, I think it's a lot more secure, right? Because not only are there no windows on the sides, right? That's just one less thing that you can see through. Um, it's also made of metal, right? So this is really, I mean, you've got to, you got to put some effort in to getting through these, right? Although I'm not sure I actually trust these locks more than I trust those locks. If someone were so inclined, I'm sure they could get through. Right. But overall, I definitely think that the security, just because of the metal construction, I'm going to give the advantage to GFC. I know we could talk about these toppers forever, but I, I got to stop you. We got to move on to bullet point number two, which is going to be a hot topic for a lot of us, even you and I. Let's talk about install. And while we're here, run me through the install process of a GFC topper. Yeah, so that's actually a really interesting point and something that I thought was really cool about GFC. So the install process, it's not difficult, but it is something that you do have to do. It's not as simple as just placing the topper on top of the vehicle. Um, there's weather stripping involved, there's sealant, there's all sorts of things um, that you know have to adhere to your bed to make sure that, that this thing is installed correctly. But what's really cool about GFC is if you actually buy one of these toppers and have it sent to one of their authorized dealers and installers, the install is included. So I was able to take my truck in once the GFC arrived and GFC handled the install for me, or should I say their dealer did, which meant that I was able to just hang around for half an hour and then one, two, skip a few, boom, it's exactly. installed. Easy process for me, so I can't complain. So if someone doesn't already own a topper and they're watching this video to decide which one they're gonna buy, how does it install? Like, can we dive into a little bit the install process beyond the weather stripping, 
Beyond all that stuff, is it like a clamp system? Do you have to drill through the bed? What does that process look like? Absolutely. So what's cool about all of these is they're reversible, right? There's not a lot of drilling involved. Actually, there's no drilling involved. The, the crux of these are just clamps, right? Okay. So in the case of both of these toppers, there's four clamps that are holding the topper in place. Now, where the install adds complexity, I should say, is with that weather stripping right. and whatnot. So you need to make sure that, you know, everything is lined up, the rubber is cut to the correct size, the strips that they send you, you're not getting any water leaks, that sort of stuff. But once you have it in place and all of that is set properly, you've just got four of these clamps here that screw into place um, and then I you're mean, good to go. These things are beefcakes. Yeah, huge. As far as clamps go. <laughs> I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about clamps, but I mean, just looking at these things, I'm like, holy fuck it. Huge points in GFC not going here. Yeah, I mean, these clamps are definitely overbuilt, and I mean that as a compliment. So, should we jump into the ARE, talk a little bit about install process and how that yeah. works? I mean, we literally just installed it on our buddy's Gladiator right here, and it was pretty easy. So, I know you were the one that did it. So, run me through it. Absolutely. So the ARE makes some things easier and some things more difficult. You're on the hook for doing the install yourself with ARE. Um, a lot of the concepts are the same, right? You gotta make sure that the weather stripping is there, the rubber's all cut to size. What is cool about the ARE, and I gotta give them points, is um, they've actually got felt lining and stuff already set up for you, which means that all you have to do is add a couple of rubber strips just for the clamps so that you don't cause any permanent damage to your bed. But for the most part, the install process is really, really simple. Again, four clamps is yeah, the I core of it. Um, just making sure that that stripping and everything is, is cut to your liking and you're good to go. So overall, similar install process, just a little bit different design on how you do it. Yes. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Is it a DIY install? Can Just say you order a GFC, it gets shipped to you, or you order an ARE, can you do it, the average person, in their, just say, garage? I will say, so the average person, yes, you can definitely do this install. I would definitely phone a friend though, because these things are not light, especially if you're trying to get them onto your truck without scratching things, without hmm. dropping things. I mean, it pays dividends to have a couple of hands. And I wanna talk about weight, but we're gonna wait. We're gonna wait to talk about weight in a little bit, um, because that is a very important topic that we'll discuss here. So while we're on this truck, let's talk about visibility. All these are big topics, but this is, I, I feel like a, a pretty big one. People want to be able to see on the back of their trucks and it's not like pickups have great visibility to begin with. So how's the ARE stack up? So ARE, I personally thought was best in class. And that's actually one of the reasons that I originally really? went with the ARE. Yeah. And that's because you've got these huge right. windows on the side, right? Having a window in the rear, is pretty standard. Pretty much everyone's got that kind of option. But I love that you have these big windows that pop open on the side. So when you get in the Gladiator, the visibility is already pretty good from the factory. That's kind of a function of how narrow the vehicle is yeah. for its class and the size of the hood and whatnot. So I kind of took that for granted and I was really bummed when I was searching for toppers and I was like, well, the first thing it's gonna do is compromise that right. rear visibility. Can't see a thing. Yeah, especially when you're driving around in the city. So yeah. I gave big points to ARE. You know, you can look through, you know, the rear view mirror and back over and see through the sides as well as the rear. You can see cars in your blind spot. It's definitely great to have these windows. And I know the GFC is designed a little bit different. So how's the GFC in terms of visibility? Yeah, so the GFC definitely sacrifices a little bit of visibility compared to its competitors. Now, I understand why they did that because they have a very unique design philosophy with these metal side doors and this construction here. So there is definitely some visibility lost. I'll have to give ARE the edge on this one. Not to say that the visibility here is really poor. Again, we've got a great rear window and both of these trucks have great windows for the pass through as well. So I'm not really wanting for visibility at the end of the day with either of these options. Makes sense, so you're basically just missing two side windows on this compared to that. I yes. mean, the windows are maybe a little bit bigger on an ARE, but you can still see through this. 
Yes, and I haven't noticed, you know, I thought that this smaller window is gonna bug me more than it actually does. Really? The end result is, yeah, I mean, when I'm looking through the rear view mirror, I can see any car that I could see through that window, through this window, so it's a wash for me. Good to know. I do notice that this one actually does have a window pass through. This doesn't in the back. I mean, it has a window, but it doesn't slide open. Yes. How often are you really using that, I understand, but I don't really think that it affects visibility, but. It doesn't affect visibility, like I mentioned earlier with functionality. Right. It's definitely a bummer that we can't pop that open and like talk through it, pass things through, right. whatever. It's one of those things that 99% of the time you don't need, but then when you do need it, exactly. you really wish you had it. Right. But it's not a deal breaker for me, and that's why I've been running this for as long as I have. All right, we're gonna jump into modularity. So big term, big word, especially in the Overland scene right now, especially when we're talking about toppers uh, and kind of what's new. So, so run me through the modularity of, of the GFC. Absolutely. Well, like you said, Overlanders love modularity, yep. and I can say that definitely extends to camera people as yep. well. Yep. We tinker with our cameras often. So I definitely needed modularity because I needed a way to mount some of the camping related stuff, work related stuff to this topper mm. while maintaining, again, the security, right? So right off the bat, I really, really loved, GFC put a lot of thought into this topper. The way that they've got these rails set up means that you can mount nearly anything up here. I mean, in this case, I've just got an awning up here, but you can easily attach all sorts of stuff to the sides, the rear, and on top, you've got rails that you can take on, take off, and you can put all sorts of stuff on there. You can put tents, you can put spare camera pelicans, all of that's really, really easy. And I definitely appreciated that that was one of the more important aspects of GFC's design philosophy. Something else I wanted to mention on the modularity front yeah. is, you know, like I had said, GFC definitely was thinking about modularity when they designed this. It's yeah. very clear. Yep. Part of what I noticed right off the bat that was really, really cool is up here, on these support tubes, yeah. they actually have removable caps where you can wire in different accessories it's cool. and run wires through the tubing. Why that is cool is because you can add any number of lights to the back. I already talked a little bit about having this somewhat see-through roof, but it's even better to know that if I was doing a night shoot, I could wire some extra lights in here uh, run those to the auxiliary ports that come with these Jeeps and be cooking with gas even after dark. Absolutely, super neat. So modularity of the ARE, what are we talking about here? Okay, so this is where I'm gonna have to dock ARE. In terms of modularity, there really isn't much. There's a couple of things you can option from the factory and part of what I'm gonna say is because I don't have the correct options. Mm. ARE actually does offer now um, rail slots up top, which allow you to mount you know, crossbars and put whatever you need up there. This particular model that I have doesn't have any of that, which means nothing's going on the top. We're not adding anything. We can't bolt anything to the top or the sides, whatever. Um, but you can option some cool stuff. Like I said, this uh, pass-through door uh, window that has the screen for right. like dogs and whatnot, that's cool and I would consider that like something modular that this doesn't offer. But it's not something that you're doing in your garage, right? That's something you have right. to pay for from the factory. So it sounds like, yeah, like you said, from the factory, ARE maybe has some additional options where you can maybe get a set of crossbars, you could do different windows on the sides, things like that, but you really can't add it after the fact. No. You're kind of like, okay, this is the model, this is what you're not necessarily stuck with, this is what you're dealing with on this particular shell. Yes, ARE definitely took the approach of this is a fire and forget product. You're yep. buying a topper, it's yep. gonna do topper things and you're gonna be happy with it, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Comparing the GFC though, they definitely took the angle of this is merely a platform and you can modify it to fit your needs. Right, that's exactly right. You can modify it to fit your needs. I mean, you could drill through, you could do things. It's just different than sliding a nut to the T-slot of that. They're just, at the end of the day, they're, they're different when it comes to the modularity side. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Okay, so we covered modularity. Let's jump into, for me, this is a big one. I feel like we're always talking about the build quality. So we're standing by the ARE. Run me through the build quality and your experience with the ARE. Yeah, I mean, I really had no complaints with the ARE in terms of build quality. You know, they put their money where it counts, right? The yeah. finishes are good. You know, the struts are really well built. Um, they seem to hold up well over time, high quality glass. I haven't had really any complaints. And the T-locks, these little T-latches here, while they might not be the prettiest things on the planet, they're <laughs> really, really well built, really yeah. easy to get to, especially when you got one hand on a camera and you've yeah. got another hand trying to pop these open and get in. I mean, I really, really like the build quality. It definitely feels like it's gonna hold up. Do we know what this is made of? Yeah, this is a fiberglass topper, okay. which comes with its own pros and cons. Sure. Um, but I really like the rigidity, it's, it's tough, it's lightweight really for what it is. Yeah. I'm impressed. Cool, and how about the GFC? Build quality on that. So GFC is really world renowned, or should I say, at least in the overlanding industry for their build quality. Yeah. That's something they've been known for right. for years with their campers. Mm -hmm. And they definitely spared no expense here. Yeah. Um, it's overbuilt, that's yeah. all I can say. I mean, you take 30 seconds to look at these latches and look at how much effort they put onto these clamps, yeah. you know, compared to what the ARE's got, and it's insane. Um, I mean, I feel like we could talk for a half hour yeah. about all the different types of machining and blah, 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 that makes a GFC a GFC. But yeah, just by looking at it, and you've been the one, you know, actually using it, very, very different in the sense of how they were built. Yes. Yeah. They're, they're both built to a high quality standard, but GFC adds that extra something yeah. that it's really hard to see on camera. You kind of just got to see it yeah. in person and feel it and look at the machining to realize that these guys are not screwing around. <laughs> not screwing around. No. Okay. That's really good to know. I feel like just having this conversation with you, I'm learning a ton and just looking at like these and the differences and hearing you discuss this, it's like crazy how different just a shell can be from just say the competitor. I'm like blown away. But let's jump into the looks, right? We're, we're camera people, we like style, we're overlanders, we like the way things look. Uh, I want your take on how this looks versus how the ARE looks. And while we're on the GFC, let's discuss that first. Absolutely. Well, it's it's no secret. You can see from a mile away that these have, you know, fundamentally different design philosophies. Yep. And it really is subjective. Now I'm gonna close this up just so you can kind of see these side by side a little bit. Like I said, super subjective. One's not better than the other. I personally really like the GFC because it's just angular. It's very, I don't know, overlandy yeah. to me. It fits the truck. I mean, yep. the truck is already a box on wheels, right? So why not add more boxes? Yep. I think it looks really, really clean. And I mean that in the overlandy sense yes. of the word clean, yes. because nothing about this lines up, right. but that's kind of what's cool about it, yep. right? Especially when you combine it with just going back to kind of how overbuilt it is. I mean, just take a look at like some of these details yeah. here, the attention, the detail, the way that they put together these top rails, you know, they add their logos here right, and there. Right. You've got the unit number, right. you know, <laughs> made in Belgrade, Montana. I mean, right. that stuff's cool, right? Very cool. So it definitely, <clears throat> definitely does something for me. Yeah. So yeah, like you said already, the look of the GFC, very different than the look of the, the ARE. Run me through your take on how this looks. So, like I said, Really subjective. I also like the way that the ARE looks. I think it's got a completely different right. design, right? I really like that some of this stuff is rounded out. Yep. It really fits well, right? This is clearly molded to fit the right. exact it's, size. It's literally effect. perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. And in that regard, they do a great job. I will say on the looks front, really small thing for me, but for whatever reason, I keep going back to these T handles sticking out. Yeah. I don't like them. Right. Although I think they're better built, I love that these are flush. Right. Um, they flow better. They, they they work with that design. These are just kind of like 
almost dumb proof, right? Yes. They're just like, hey, they work. You know, why change something that works? And that's kind of the route that it seems like they went with. Absolutely. And ARE, you know, this is kind of a design style they've stuck to for years. Yeah. And, you know, they're actually well known as being the first topper that was offered on the Gladiator. So you got to give them credit that they're not followers here. You know, this came out well before the GFC did. Yeah. So they kind of had to make it up as they went. Yep. Cool. Good to know. I love hearing your take because, I mean, everybody has their own opinion, right? Absolutely. So it's great. All right. We kind of discussed weight but not in depth. So I, I, I looked it up while we were talking. So we've got two weights here and they're actually drastically different. This is fiberglass, that's aluminum. If I were to guess, I don't know. I mean, I've always known fiberglass to also be a pretty lightweight, but the ARE's coming in at 175 pounds. So it goes right back to you saying, call a buddy if you're installing this thing. Absolutely. I mean, a buck 75 is not easy to move on your own. And the GFC comes in at 135. And I believe that's spec'd out, like that includes a, crossbars that includes how it looks without the awning. So you're talking about like a 40, 50 pound difference here, which, you know, when you're talking about weight, when you're talking about, you know, building your truck, all that stuff matters. Yeah, I thought it was really interesting because like you, I also thought that fiberglass, I've always thought right. was relatively lightweight. That's a strong material option to use yeah. when you're trying to keep something lightweight and also rigid. Yep. Um, so it was very surprising to me when I found out that the all metal construction of the GFC actually came in lighter. Yeah. Although if you ask GFC, I'm sure they'll tell you that that was one of their main yeah. you know, design points. They've clearly designed this. And when you really look for it, you can see that that everything they did was designed to save weight while maintaining its strength. Yep. So, I mean, credit where credit is due, GFC crushed it there. I, I, I don't know for sure, but it's gotta be one of the more lighter weight shells in the market. Right, and that has to do with, you know, kind of has as we had shown earlier, the fact that it's got those yep. kind of triangular supports right. here. Um, Versus the whole thing, you know, being covered on this one. Exactly. There's yep. just a lot more material here. Yep. You know, this is strong. I'm not worried about it at all, but it is thinner metal. Yep. So this doesn't weigh a ton, right? So really the crux of the design is just in this kind of triangular mount thing right. that they've got going on, which is strong and light. So there yeah. it is. So the, the biggest, the biggest topic here, the biggest uh, discussion point, if you will, when you're considering buying anything, I mean, not just toppers, is price. I mean, if I'm looking at a topper, regardless if, you know, money matters to me, I'm still, it still comes down a certain extent to how much that costs. So I'm actually kind of surprised, I don't know if you know this, but the price of these two are actually somewhat comparable. Uh, the ARE, this one, this specifically ARE, is gonna run you about 3,600 bucks. Uh, and the GFC, just how you see it without the awning, is gonna run you four grand. Now, I don't think that includes shipping, doesn't include install, it's just the topper as you see it. Is that right? Yes, and it also doesn't include any of these uh, rail accessories. Oh, okay, accessories doesn't, it does not like include that. that stuff. Okay, so that's um, all extra. But that, you know, on that front, it's a little bit of a wash because right. like I said, you can option right. rails from ARE as well. Right. Um, if you spec both these out, I mean, the price just, you know, keeps going up essentially. Right. Yeah. The, what I found with the toppers is, here's the reality. Yeah. Neither of these are cheap, yeah. right? None of these toppers are cheap. So the build quality, the design, everything is there. It's just a matter of where these companies are deciding to put their money. Right. So it is interesting that, you know, GFC is, is known for being a premium option. Um, so I thought it was impressive that they were able to keep the price where it was yeah. compared to you know what ARE is coming in at. ARE is a bit cheaper, so you know if you are trying to save a little bit of cash, you're getting an excellent piece of equipment for you yeah. know multiple hundreds of dollars less. But you know if you're already working in the multi-thousand dollar price bracket, at a certain point, right. pick the one that's what's you know, a few hundred bucks for you. Right. right. That's, that's kind of what I thought. And it's like you said, both these are premium products, right? We're not comparing you know a shell from you know Alibaba. Right, these is an ARE and a GFC, I mean, these are top dogs, top of the line. You know, you're right. getting the best of the best, you know, for your Jeep Gladiator. And it just, it, it, you can keep going, it's like you're buying a Jeep Gladiator, you're already spending the money. 
<laughs> right. So if you want a shell, you, know, you might as well get some. If I was saving money, last. I would have bought a copper. Right, right. You know, exactly. It's a topper for a reason, right. right. So yeah, I mean, but it's definitely good to know when looking at these two yeah. products that I was not wanting yeah. from either of these. Yeah. You know, it was money well spent in yeah. both regards, so. So let me ask you this. Uh, photographer, videographer, this rig is built for media purposes and basically media purposes only. It's gotta be able to follow the other trucks on the trail. It's gotta be able to do all the obstacles. It's gotta be able to hit the road, travel the country, do it all. If you were to pick a topper, ARE, GFC, you had to run it for one year, which one are you gonna choose? Man, I mean, that is a tough question. It's loaded, it's very it's, loaded, because I know they're both very different. Yeah, I mean. But for your needs. For my needs, I definitely think after having tried these both yeah. for about six months, right. I'm gonna pick the GFC. Okay. Here's why. Because the functionality, at the end of the day, this is a work truck. It's yeah. just a pretty one, yeah. right? <laughs> exactly. So the pass through, like being able to get full size Pelican cases in and out on these tight trails, right? You don't have a lot of room to walk around in, right? So being able to get Pelican cases in and out in its entirety through these side doors is a big, big deal for me, especially if we're out on multi-day trips. Maybe I am camping. Maybe right. I get to overland on my work trip. Well, being able to, you know, mount a tent on top here yeah. or something is right. just huge. Right. So as it currently sits, the GFC definitely takes the cake for me. Um, but again, it, it really comes down to your needs. If I was a city driver, most of the time, I probably would consider the ARE to be the preferred option because that visibility is just great. Right. You know? So it's it's hard for me to give it to someone, but if I had the pick, it's gonna be GFC. Yeah. I hope that, you know, our conversation, this discussion, you know, helps whoever's watching this video if they're deciding about, you know, buying a topper or a shell or if they're maybe they, you know, the decision making is coming down to an ARE versus GFC. We hope that this was helpful for you. Thank you, Sterling, for your expertise, your experience. Thank you. You've used both these, you know, for well over several months. So I appreciate it and uh, catch you in the next video.